hello to all my queers and dears who may or may not be here. Welcome back to the stream where we play non-violent games. Games that reward the player for intellectual and or emotional engagement rather than for participating in combat or other forms of violent gameplay loops. We're starting Back to the Future of the Game today. Also, hello, Bardock! We sure are. Technically our second one since the first one was Tales of Monkey Island. This was like their... Kind of their last big point and click game. Before they got swept up in stuff like The Walking Dead and all the games like it. Which eventually led to their demise. Before now they have a bit of a rebirth. But yeah, basically once they hit like the the success of the walking dead they just like basically the financial demand was to keep churning those out games exactly like the walking dead hitting that same market every single time and it was completely unsustainable um and they collapsed uh basically all caught up to them and like one afternoon. It was really bad. Uh, um, but uh, some folks uh, bought up the Telltale name and the licenses that were left over uh, and have been slowly rebuilding it with the mission to not repeat the same mistakes, but also to hopefully recapture some of what made Telltale special. Um... So that's exciting. I'm excited for the future of Telltale. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, and I'm hoping it'll do it right. Uh, that they'll do it right. So, here's the thing. We are playing this on... The, we even have choices that actually matter and affect the game. Yeah, so actually... Um, so we won't be playing them. Because, unfortunately, they were pretty violent. But... Uh, the, uh, the second season of Batman Telltale is really good at that. Like, they had finally cracked it. They had finally cracked it. Um, and then that was one of their last games before they collapsed. Um... Yeah, so... Without giving too many spoilers, um, basically, you determine how the story of the Joker goes. Yeah, I agree. It was a consistent flaw in the Telltale in the Telltale games, uh, and they really did find a way to really make it really matter. Uh, in that second season of Batman Telltale, because they literally had two completely separate final chapters, right? So Telltale, as you can see, released everything in chapters, right? So, um, that model has now basically gone away for the most part, which is probably good because it ended up really crunching a lot of people. Anyways, the point is, uh, when they were releasing the second season of Batman Telltale, um, uh, what, what, um, what would happen was basically they were developing two separate versions of Chapter 5. Uh, depending on the choices you made, you would get one of them. Fair enough. Um, we can talk about that later. Um, but, but, honestly, like, just for what it's worth, and I, again, I'm actually, I'm sad that the Batman Telltale games are are not games I don't I, I think will fit within what I'm going for 
because, quite frankly, it's maybe my favorite version of the Joker ever. Like, it's really good. Um... Uh, so yeah. Anyways, uh, so, here we are with Back to the Future the game. This is, uh, really the, uh, the closest that we've ever gotten to, uh, to a Back to the Future Part 4, basically. Uh, there are no Back to the Futures Part 4. There will probably never be a Back to the Future Part 4, and that's probably for the best. Uh, the creators of Back to the Future, who were involved in this game, uh, in, in helping write it and everything, um, uh, have fought tooth and nail to maintain control of the Back to the Future uh, IP, uh, to make sure that the only things that are made with it are made with integrity and don't disrespect the original trilogy, uh, and so that's why we don't have any reboots, basically. Um, not that people in Hollywood wouldn't beg for it. Uh, not that a bunch of fans have not begged for it. Um, not me. I think the original trilogy shouldn't be touched. Um, uh, the only thing I could think... Like, I think that there is room for the story to continue. Like, I love this. But I also love the fact that this isn't necessarily canon. This is one potential timeline of what happens after Back to the Future Part 3. And they did, like, a different one in an old animated series uh, that like, is much older. And they did a different one in some comics. So, like, the idea... The, the only thing that is definitely canon is the Back to the Future trilogy. Anything else, any other ancillary material, is a hypothetical timeline. But, I would say this is the closest we've actually gotten to a Back to the Future Part 4 because of the amount of returning performances and stuff like that. Um, you know, you can't really call comics Back to the Future Part 4, you know? Anyways... Uh, that's all a bit of a ramble, but I love Back to the Future, and I have loads of trivia, so I figured I may as well give it. Um, so we're playing this on the PlayStation 5. Uh, well, it's technically the PlayStation 4 version. But we're playing it on the PlayStation 5, even though it doesn't have a good point-and-click system, because it's PlayStation. Um, but we are because I think it has, it'll have better graphics than if I play it on, um, on my PC. Uh, because my PC is pretty good, but it can only handle so much. And, uh, and also, this was the 30th anniversary edition. Uh, not of the game, obviously, but of the Back to the Future trilogy. Specifically of the first Back to the Future, they re-released this game. Uh, and one of the things they did was they got the original performer for Biff back to voice him, which they didn't have the first time around. Um... So, without further ado, let's get started. All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm s I'm sorry, that just said starring Telltale Games. I think that was a mistake. Standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 AM. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einie. Hey boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. Get 
You got that thing hooked up to the car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Yeah, it was a great call to not go for photorealism in this game. Not me. The car. The car. They easily could have, and I like that they didn't. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Watch this, watch this! is when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact, and at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it in some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flush dispersal. Look out! So, Bardock, I don't believe you've watched Back to the Future Part 1, right? So, this is a recreation. Uh, Doc? Oh, that's of peculiar. An important scene. Oh, uh, the first the test car, of the time Doc? travel. It should have caught up with us. 27 seconds ago. But here's the thing. Something is wrong. Doc, uh, w what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuit. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Because, obviously, what happened in the movie is... Uh, is that the time machine came back. It all worked. So what we're dealing with here, something is wrong. So, like I said, there's not a point and click uh, thing here, which is too bad. Um, especially because something that's really charming uh, about the PC version uh, is that um, uh, is that the mouse cursor uh, the mouse cursor on the PC is actually a little flux capacitor which is really really charming hey Len what is it with scientists using animals for dangerous uh, tests What's in the box? Don't touch that! It's plutonium! But, uh, plutonium? How do you think I generated 1.21 gigawatts of power? Um... So what's using animals? Like, well... Notebook. Notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I detail the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's Mass equals I times Z, and E equals the square root of Z times C squared. And the flux dispersal rate is inversely proportional to the fourth root of N, carry the nine, then... Um, Doc, 
Shouldn't we get out of here before the Libyans show up? I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Doc! Marty? Is everything okay? Yeah, Mom, I... It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap, I'm late. Just a little loud. Yeah, so... Yeah, well... For Doc... You know, he worries about that, of course. But... He also loves the exploration that... Yes, it does. It does take place after the third movie. Uh, I was talking earlier before we got started uh, that this about uh, this being the closest thing we've ever gotten to a Back to the Future Part 4, but how it's not technically canon, uh, because the only things that really remain canon are the original three films, whereas there's been a like a, a post Back to the Future 3 TV show, a post Back to the Future 3 comic, uh, a post Back to the Future 3 video game, and they're all sort of taking place at about the same time. So there's no, there's no like uh, canon. Uh, and they're all done by like the actual like original writers and stuff. So like they're all equally. Well, actually, I don't think the TV show was. But they're basically all equally canon in that none of them are. Uh, they're all sort of potential timelines. Potential post-Back to the Future 3 timelines. Bob Gale was the writer for the original Back to the Future films. Dad, are we too late to stop the... Sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage. And Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. At least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty. Hi, Biff. 
Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... remembering. So, despite the, um, uncanny similarities in his performance, this is not Michael J. Fox. Uh, voicing Marty, that is. But it is Christopher Lloyd voicing Doc. Um, sadly, you know, Michael J. Fox doesn't really do much performing anymore. Uh, because of his Parkinson's. Um, although he does have a little guest role, uh, in, uh, in the fifth chapter, but that's later on. But yeah, no, 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 this is... Is Parkinson's disease? You don't know about that? I miss Einstein. A fish tank? I never knew Doc raised fish. Doc's fish had weird taste and decor. I kind of like Doc. Okay, so... Okay, how much do I know about Parkinson's? It's not... I don't know much. Um... Yeah, a little bit like that, Len. Uh, but not quite, quite, but a little bit. Um, but no, uh, so Parkinson's basically, basically his, his body doesn't work right anymore. It can't, like, stay still. He's always, his, he, he, it just doesn't work right anymore. His body has been basically de debilitating, um, for years. Um, um, it's really, really heartbreaking, um, because he really is such a good guy. Anyways, he's spent the majority of his career now not acting, but trying to, uh, raise money to help find, uh, here for Parkinson's. Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can't intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? Hey, I don't need the hint. Okay? I just wanted to look around a bit. It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Let's make some noise. Although, uh, when, um, uh, what did happen was when... Hey, let me! Now, Biff, leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. G sorry, Marty. So, um, so Michael J. Fox did, uh, come back to the role for, um, for the lines, uh, to, uh, for, for the new lines for, uh, Marty McFly in, uh, Lego Dimensions. Uh, but that was a significantly smaller part. This was just too much, too intensive for him, basically. Um... I hope that wasn't poison gas or anything. Maybe you should have thought of that before, then. 
Hey, let me try, Marty. Now, Biff, let Marty have his turn. Uh, you got it, Mr. McFly. Biff, stop being an ass. Sorry, I forgot. That's like asking a human to stop breathing. Feels like that was a lifetime ago. Actually, I guess it was. Doc built this model at Downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. Can I see that model courthouse for just a second? I need to get something out of it. Like what? A not guilty verdict? That was a joke. Oh, huh. but really, can I? Nah, I think I'll hold on to it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me to... Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. <laughs> Doc must have whipped up some crazy compounds in that cauldron. <laughs> oh, it smells like beef stew. I appreciate that game, but I don't need it. Hey, Dad, why's my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up, I'll iron things out with the bank. Nope, sorry, that was a hint. I meant the... It may not look like much, but it packs a wallop. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> hey, look, it's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Now, Biff, I think that's Marty's guitar. Oh, uh, gosh, uh, you're right, Mr. McFly. Oh, here you go, Marty. Let's hear a few licks. Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. No, he wasn't going to. He dead. No, he was not trying to sell his kid's guitar without his consent, Fardock. Like he said, it got mixed up with stuff. His guitar was basically with all of Doc's stuff because he hung out with Doc a lot. And when things were, when uh, when everyone was putting tags on everything, they put one on his guitar, basically, is what seems to have happened. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You, why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know... Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. 
Well, you know him better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff. But I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. Yeah, well, it's been a few months since the end of Back to the Future Part 3, is what it's saying. About Biff, Dad, I, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle it. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son. I'll stay out of your way. You know where to find me. That notebook is Doc's legacy. I've got an obligation to protect it. Now, hold on a minute. Didn't you just get done telling me Doc's still around? Off traveling somewhere? Yeah. Then how is it your obligation to protect his legacy? You can't have it both ways, Marty. If Doc's alive, he can protect his own legacy. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. I wonder why Doc didn't take any of these with him. Time when you're time traveling. I better not crank it up anymore. I really don't want to blow this thing out again. Now that is a dangerous amp. And now something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming them up for me, butthead. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. Whoa! Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. Ah, Doc, where are you? I know that sound. Einstein! Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you? So, here's some fun trivia. In the first film, when the DeLorean uh, time traveled, Similar to here, it was covered in ice. But, funny thing, uh, when they were doing the sequels, they realized that that was too expensive <laughs> to do every single time it traveled. So, they didn't do it anymore. Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. Ah! 
Looks like the time circuit still work. Now I only need to know when to look for that. I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Automatic retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I program the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always a possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, come to my rescue in the past. Or was it the future? Anyway. I'm relying on you to do it again. Please take the DeLorean back or forward to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Now, aren't you going to tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading mark, last time departed. Good luck. Right, right, last time departed, last time departed. Uh, oh, jeez. Come on, come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? I probably shouldn't fiddle with the time circuits again until I know when to look for Doc. This time traveling shoe is my only clue to finding Doc. And maybe Einie can help us out. What do you know about this shoe, Einie? Great, Great Scott! I think he's onto something! Okay, now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to Doc, Einie? Starbase Zero. I hope Jimmy's fixed the wild gunman machine. The hell? There appear to be some glitches in this game, some mistakes. Like that, and the starring Telltale Games thing in the front. And it's a little surprising that they haven't uh, patched it all these years later. A1 liquor. I like the new bars Mr. Figgins put on the windows. Very secure. What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? Why couldn't Doc have invented a dog translator? That would have been great. It's locked. is on there. Step away from the door. Ah. Now, let me get a look at you. Einstein, come on. Just as I suspected. Hooligans. Get along now. Scat. E. Strickland? You aren't related to uh, Vice Principal Strickland, are you, ma'am? Not that it's any of your business, but I'm his sister, Edna. Oh, and you're one of those McFly slackers, aren't you? Yes, uh, what's old man Strick? I mean, what else has your brother been saying about me? Nothing I couldn't have deduced for myself, slacker. The official dog translator wasn't invented until... 2000, then released in 2009. Okay, but it's like, you still can't understand dogs. Like, people have not figured out how to translate dog into English. 
that's not a thing. Right? I'm pretty sure. Oh! Okay. I thought you meant, like, someone did it actually. And, like... I could easily imagine someone, like, put out, like... Like, an official dog translator thing that, like, was, like... not real kind of like is like this is what your dog wants right now you know like and it's like ah we tend to uh you know put like we we tend to t tend to anthropomorphize uh, animals that don't communicate in a same way. So that's why you get people saying, like, dogs are really social and kind, and cats are very antisocial and, like, mean, because we don't, we, we translate our own experiences onto animals. So, you know, um, so that's that's why people will translate those experience th those things like oh like this cat isn't actively trying to spend time with me all the time they don't love me as much as a dog who's constantly coming back to me all, all the time for something but cats are just more like independent and they show love differently most of the time uh whereas you know for me a dog showing me love is actually respecting my personal boundaries, which they don't do. Uh, most of the time, most dogs don't don't respect personal boundaries. So, um... I'm not a hooligan, ma'am. I'm a, a teenager. I wasn't born yesterday, young man. Aren't you the miscreant who skateboards through the town square every morning between 8 and 8.30 in a decidedly unpunctual manner? Uh, yeah? All skateboarders are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. State your business, child. You're making me miss Merv. Well, see, that's, see, that's the thing. I'm not sure why I'm here. Einstein here brought me, and... Well? Got something for you? Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. Um. A shoe? Wow, now what would I want with a... Huh? <gasps> Sorry, Einstein. Well, took you long enough. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Much better. So neat and orderly. Now nah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Don't... Call a woman a hag, Bardock. Uh, Have a seat, Sonny. That's not good practice. Hey, you kid! Put out those cigarettes! Hey, let's talk to her, I guess. Uh, 
uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! Yes? Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! Hi, <laughs> what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But... Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh... Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. <gasps> when was it? Oh, yes. The day that speakeasy burned down. <laughs> a speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. Yes, sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. But yeah, um, Bardock, uh... Calling a woman, especially an old woman, a hag is kind of laden with misogynistic history. So, worth being aware of that. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. True. Student of history? My Aunt Fanny! Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two right things about history. Miss Strickland? Oh, video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. I mean, as long as it was covered, which, you know, means it's probably a lot of, like, stuff that happened with, like, black people and stuff that wasn't in the newspaper. So, uh, or was, uh, covered but with biases, you know. So, just saying. I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Well, that sounds fun. You mean the collecting of the newspapers, or, like, what What are you specifically responding to? Sorry, the lag is a thing, so. Doing some stargazing? No, oh, I set my sights on lower things. Is that? Jim Tanner! Get away from that hubcap before I call! Don't let me keep you from your business. Oh, got it. You there! Don't even think about tossing that Kleenex on the ground! Well, 
Mind if I take a look? Go ahead, dear. I'm gonna leave video. 1932. Okay, so we're looking for 1931. Rebuilt in February 1932. The fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Don't look at me. I'm far too old for you. That is... I don't really like that joke. Oh, the candy looks older than I am. <laughs> is that Vice Principal Strickland? Mother never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. Marshall Strickland. My grandfather, gunned down by Mad Dog Tannen over a hundred years ago. That's not how I remember it. What are these? My editorial trophies. Cat Lovers Quarterly. It's legitimate journalism. Whatever you say, Edna. Miss Strickland lost that shoe on the day the speakeasy burned down. And I know that was sometime in 1932. But I've got to get more specific than that if I'm going to find Doc. No, 1931, Marty. You said it was the year before. Uh, Miss Strickland, about your tea. Uh, you forgot to turn on the... You! It's spelled with a U! You illiterate vandal! Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Miss Pretty Whiskers is very particular about who handles her food. Touch those! My newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. Okay. <clears throat> Man, she keeps it hot in here. the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. Then don't touch anything. And that right there is the uh, graphic adventure game uh, instruction for touch things. Touch all the things. Let's see. Ground broken on site of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd. Soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob... What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. Oh, no! My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh, let me... Ah! You've gotten my history out of order. Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Oh, get out, get out, get out! Help! Police! I'm being attacked by hooligans! But yeah, I mean, the thing is that, you know... The press has an obligation to report the truth and to keep the public educated. Marty! He doesn't always do that. Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? And even when it does, the reporters have biases. You know? Just like any human. So if you don't have a diverse journalistic staff, you're gonna not have quite the right stuff. You know? Your, your, your facts are gonna be slanted. Hey, thanks for the follow!
My alert box is working, it seems. Finally. Yeah, it is. I love Back to the Future so much, and this is a great, uh, a great follow-up story to the original trilogy. It's, uh, my uniform. Uh, didn't I tell you? I, uh, I got a job. At the Model T factory? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Never mind, you don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. Ready to go, Einstein? He is. He's generally a good dad, I think. Uh, we haven't gotten much of this version of him over the years. Uh, because... Basically... Basically... So, the guy who played... Uh, Marty's father, uh, in the first film is named Crispin Glover, uh, and he refused to come back for the following two films, uh, which, yeah, they didn't build on him much, and, uh, you know, it's, it's funny, because the first film was really about him connecting with his father, and I do, I do like that, you know, the second movie in particular really does, like, show that that, 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 that time spent with his dad has had an impact on him. But at the same time, yeah, I, I would have liked more. I would have liked more, uh, especially with this new, healthier version of him. Um, you know, the version of him that grew up confident. Um, and that is a success. Like, I would have loved more with him. Um. Time circuits? On. Flux capacitor? Uh, fluxy. Okay, if Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. I guess the idea is, you know, when you go into history, you want to spend as little time there as possible. Yeah, that's great, yeah. But yeah, um, 
I think that's sort of the idea. I mean, obviously, on one hand, it's to manufacture a ticking clock, right? Narratively speaking. But I think the other thing is that, you know, the longer you stay in Einstein, the past, where do you go now, boy? The more risk you have of messing things up. If you want to fix something, you want to do it quick. Because otherwise, you can have a much, much bigger impact on things the longer time you spend there. It's all right, Len. Thanks for coming. Hey, that hairdo looks familiar. Young man, excuse me, young man. Who, uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh... Doc get himself into... Doc? Doc is his nickname. I'm good friends with Carl. You are? Really? Oh, but I need an unbiased opinion for my story. Pretend you don't know him. How would you feel about his heroic act of destruction? There's gotta be some sort of mistake here. Doc, I mean, uh, uh, Carl wouldn't do something like that. It's surprising the lengths a person will go to when it's a clear-cut matter of right and wrong. You've got an honest look about you. You do support the side of righteousness, I trust. Well, I'm not so big on bomb blasts. Yes, but this bomb blasted a speakeasy, the very symbol of lawlessness and corruption. You're all for cleaning up the town, aren't you? You have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets? No doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? No, uh, not really. That's the spirit. Destroy them with indifference. If we refuse to patronize their establishments and glorify their wicked exploits, they'll soon be exposed for the pathetic wretches they are. May I get your name? Yeah, it's... I think this is the one that's used by default in the next chapter, so... Harry Callahan. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Callahan. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. She sure is. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. Doc. I gotta find Doc. He hasn't changed much over the years. Hmm. Hey, uh, can I get some moose? What does this look like? A hunting lodge? You gonna buy anything? Um, no. Then get out, Mom. I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How would Doc ever get mixed up in that? looking it up even um i have no idea it makes some set like i don't know it's it's not that it doesn't make sense but i maybe it makes sense i have no idea actually and i should stop talking as if i do gail zemeckis and fine 
Attorneys at law. <laughs> no solicitors. I know that uh, Bob Gale and Bob Zemeckis uh, were the um, writer and director of Back to the Future, respectively. Um, I don't know who Fine is, but I'm assuming it's Bob Fine. Um, but I don't know who... Because the, the joke wouldn't work if the th third person's first name wasn't Fine, but I don't know who Bob Fine is. Uh, or it wasn't it wasn't Bob rather. It's, it's, it Hello. Bob. No solicitors. Bank of Italy. Um, he didn't write the game, I don't think, but he was actively involved with it. Like, the he's credited as a story consultant in the opening. Um, but he was an active part of it, and he was, you know, um. Sisters of Mercy Soup Kitchen. Come for the soup, stay for the salvation. Fly, Biff, kid, Grandpa. That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? Well, what are you still doing here? Sorry, kid, I'll just... Run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Uh, now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Wait, wasn't one of the newspaper headlines Soup Kitchen exposed? <clears throat> okay. Hey, um, uh, never mind. For we were born only yesterday, and know nothing, and our days on Earth are but a shadow. Actually, I won't be born for about 40 years. Maybe I should go to the jail and talk to Doc before I start dialing random people in 1931. That's probably a good idea. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. Stopped you before, but okay. The kitchen's for management only, Rummy. Whoa! Whoa! That might be a bit, a bit of a bit, a bit extreme, but okay. Doc! Doc! What are you 
you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Yes, he is. Hey, Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan. A plan? Right. But what? Yes, uh, he is still Christopher Lloyd. Um, and uh, I mentioned this before uh, you arrived, but Marty is not voiced by Michael J. Fox, despite the uncanny similarity uh, to his performance in the original trilogy uh, of the Back to the Future films. It's a really remarkable performance, uh, how, how close it is. Uh, but, uh, yeah. No, I, I love that... I love how Christopher Lloyd has just been game for reprising the role of Doc literally for anything over the years. Like, you could tell how much how much joy playing Doc uh, gives him, because he's really always up for it, it seems like. Uh, you never noticed that it was someone else, you mean? Uh, playing Marty, that is? Tell the authorities. Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be murdered tomorrow? They'd ship us both off to the loony bin. And trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. Yeah, no, no, no. They're... It's a, it's a really good performance. I believe the voice actor's name is uh, A.J. Locasio, if I remember correctly. It's, it's an incredible... Uh, it's incredible mi mimic uh, of, of Michael J. Fox's voice from the uh, 1980s and early 1990s. Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc. You're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them they're about to shoot the wrong guy. I don't think the criminals of this era are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided, do you? That's a fair point. Why don't we try to tough it out? Now that we know what's coming, maybe we sneak it past the gangsters with a bulletproof vest or something. That might work with one or two bullets, but from the looks of this article, it appears that I'm going to be mowed down in a hail of Tommy gun fire that rendered the innocent stranger little more than a puffy mass of bones and gristle. Who writes like that? According to the byline, one Edna Strickland. I should have guessed. I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You'll need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely. 
don't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Then what am I supposed to... Just be your charming self. From what I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. Okay, okay let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why did you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Hill Valley Police Station. Cripes, this place looks old, even for 1931. Who are you and what do you want? Can I talk to uh, Carl Sagan? Are you his lawyer? Um, no. Then scram. Looks like these pipes go into the basement. Nice rack. Yeah, we got all kinds of uh, the culinary enhancements back there. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Alright, to the courthouse then. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Don't touch those! These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm, uh, Harry Callahan. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. I don't need to go in there anymore. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. What's this important business you're up to? 
Captain, it's a legal matter. Very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. So, Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till 9. 9 at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. Yikes. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Callahan, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Did your dad tell you that? Every morning. Poor guy. How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer? Uh, or soda? What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before eight, my pop would kill me. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the... am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong! I really think they just did a, a f amazing job making a young doc. You know? I just, I just think this is such a, a, a great... Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for. In more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! Okay. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing. Emmett, uh, about Don't your... say it. We take 8% of Numidian line up. You found my younger self yet? Well, I met your younger self. Great. And I gotta say, you're kind of uptight. What? You won't even talk to me. I find that hard to believe. Tell me what happened. I tried asking him about your rocket drill, but he says he's not a scientist. What? What? Oh, uh, father. What's he got to do with this? 
1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps, practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. It sucked a lot. Fortunately, I eventually stood up to him. But right now, my younger self probably thinks he's been sent by my father to check up on me. Yikes. Yikes. What do I do to convince Team Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm not sure. Well, that's useful, I suppose. He said sarcastically. Why does your younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be muttering? I, I, I never mutter unless... Uh... The Hill Valley Expo! Expo? Yes, the Expo! How could I have forgotten? In a few months, the younger me will put on a demonstration at the Hill Valley Exposition, my first public foray into the world of science. Everyone in town will be there, including a number of noted inventors who shaped my career. So, it was a big success? No, it was a miserable failure, but it was a spectacularly miserable failure, one which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist into a professional seeker of truth. What does this expo have to do with you muttering all the time? When I was younger, I used to relieve stress by working on complex mathematical conundrums. No doubt my younger self is working on some impossible problem in an attempt to work off cerebral steam in the weeks before the exposition. What was I muttering about? I don't know. Uh, H to the something when the universe is something else. I I'm not so good at equations. That's too bad. I bet if we could solve my younger self's problem, he'd be more inclined to listen to you. You know, your younger self seems really dedicated to the law. It's a facade, I assure you. I had to keep up appearances to appease my father. I still can't figure out what your younger self is muttering about. Blast! If only I could hear him myself. We do have a tape recorder. What do I do to convince Team Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm uh, not sure. Maybe if we solve that problem he's working on, he'll be more inclined to trust you. Let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget, we're on a bit of a deadline here. Psst, Doc! Morty! How goes the escape plan? Where have you been all this time? I missed you. I missed you too, Marty. But I thought it was important to let you live your own life for a while, free from the insanity of time travel. I gotta admit, it was nice to not have my family history blowing up in my face for a few months. Besides, I've been busy raising my own unpredictable teenagers. So how are Clara and the kids? They're fine, fine. Right now we're trying to decide where to send Jules and Vern to college. Clara prefers the 2020s, but I'm partial to the 1960s. I'm planning on visiting you and Jennifer in 2011 soon. Me and Jennifer? In 2011? Oh, forget I said anything. Where'd the DeLorean come from? The last time I saw it had been smashed to pieces by a train. It's a fantastic story. Do you remember when the DeLorean got struck by lightning in 1955? Yeah. yeah. Unbeknownst to either of us, the lightning produced a temporal duplicate of the time machine. One that was tossed 70 years into the future. What? I found out about it during a trip to 2025 and recovered it just in time to stop Rift Tannen from vandalizing the time stream. Heavy. So that DeLorean... is for all intents and purposes the exact same machine as the original. Plus or minus little bells and whistles I've added over the years, of course. Fair enough, I suppose. What are you doing in 1931? So, what were you doing in 1931 anyway? Oh, nothing terribly exciting. Indulging in a little personal nostalgia, picking up a few rare out-of-print books to surprise Clara on her birthday, solving a historical mystery or two. The usual. The usual? You lead a pretty unusual life, Doc. It's an unusual universe, Marty. I hate to tell you, Doc, but your last time departed display is on the fritz. It is? So how did you find me? I found one of Edna Strickland's shoes in the DeLorean. How did one of her shoes get in the DeLorean? Einstein took it from her. He did? How strange. Einie almost never attacks people. Not without a good reason, anyway. 
you wind up in jail in 1931 anyway? During my trip to the past, I decided to look into one of Hill Valley's unsolved mysteries. The fire at the speakeasy. Exactly. I thought I was safely hidden across the street. But when the fire started, there was a tremendous explosion, and I was knocked unconscious by a stray brick. When I woke up, I was here in jail, charged with arson. That's horrible. I know. Worse yet, I still don't know who started the fire. Guess who I bumped into at the soup kitchen? My grandfather. No! Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good. I wish I could, though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kit Tannen's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. What's the story with this kid Tannen jerk anyway? Biff's father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, and Kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy three hours. No kidding. What do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes. Now I remember. Ask Edna. The etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost her mind. That would explain a lot. I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that. That's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986, after we saved me from a grisly death in 1931. Sounds like a solid, uh... Hang in there, Doc. Solid power. Not the best choice of words, Marty. Oh, yeah. No, hang in there is maybe not not the best choice of words when we're dealing with your potential execution. That's not great. Anyways, uh... But, uh, let's do... Brown Estate. Klondike 51038. Marty? Ah! This notebook has all of Doc's plans for the flux capacitor and the DeLorean. I'd better make sure it never falls into the wrong hands. I love my dad and grandpa, but I'm kind of happy I get my looks from mom. Yeah, me too. Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh. Whoops. That's awkward. Okay, let's give this to Doc. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. Good grief! Is that me? I sound so young. I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. Fair enough. Let's go talk to Emmett. The 
is. Where is he? There he is. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. Great Scott! If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A. <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Well, it's like this. If you know about my rocket power drill, then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Ah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. Besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Arthur McFly? You got a subpoena my grandpa? <gasps> It's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. Some of us down at the patent office are wondering, what made you think of a rocket-powered drill? Ah, that'd be Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. It was... a revelation! Yeah, that's kind of what we figured. You have to deliver a lot of subpoenas? Father's always sending me out to do these dirty jobs. He wants to expose me to different kinds of people. But all he's exposed me to is a lot of new curse words. If serving subpoenas is such dirty work, why don't you just say no? Look, what's the worst thing that can happen to me on this job? You could get shot. Yeah, well, believe me, that's nothing compared to what I'll get if I mouth off to my pop. Any idea where we could find Artie? Not a jot. If only we had a way of tracking him. Hey, maybe we can get Artie's hat and give it to Einstein. This subpoena's for Arthur McFly? Have you seen him? For a few seconds in the soup kitchen, but I think he's gone back into hiding. Brilliant deduction, Einstein. What do you know about Arthur McFly? Certified accountant. Graduated Hill Valley five classes ahead of me. Seems like a nice fellow, actually. How did he get mixed up with a guy like Kid Tannen? Who knows? Sometimes people find themselves stuck in situations they can't get out of. Kid Tannen. What do we know about him? He's loud, he's obnoxious, he's not very bright, and he doesn't like anybody getting in his way. Yep, that's a Tannen, all right. Have you read The Time Machine? H.G. Wells? Not yet, but it's on my list. This might be a stupid question, but couldn't you have designed your rocket-powered drill to run on fuel that, you know, isn't illegal? Illegal? What does law have to do with science? Science has its own laws. You of all people should know that. 
couldn't you tweak your engine design a little so it runs on something else? Like what? I don't know. Gas, maybe? Gasoline? <laughs> Yesterday's news. You'll see. By 1940, automobiles will all run on pure alcohol. We'll get that subpoena delivered. My name isn't... Harry Callahan! Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Anyways, let's get that hat. Oh. Yep. I am. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Callahan. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. What's the scoop? I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. Did you finish the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit. Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls. Or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. I don't know what got into him. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good. Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. What's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen, but for some reason the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. I can help you deliver soup, but I don't need a lot of time to charities. Oh? Which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Ah, yes. The Italians do so many good works. If you'll just fix it so I can pick up the barrels of soup. Now hold your horses, let's not get over eager. I drive the soup cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But, if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. Okay. I got a book. Oh? Where? What the hell, Matches? You, you got Kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here. How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? Uh, I guess I'm here to shine your shoes. I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. Since you're Arthur's boss, you know where he is, right? He's at the, uh, office. Where's the office? I forget. So when do you think Arthur will be leaving the office? When I tell him he can leave the office. Hey, you missed a spot. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Can I have some peanuts? Why not? 
I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Don't mind if I do. All right, break time's over. Back to work. I want to ask some more questions before we, um... How come you won't let the Stay Sober Society hold their meeting in the cellar of your soup kitchen? We got other plans for that cellar, and it don't necessarily involve staying sober. So, one more thing about that hat. You're testing my patience, boy. Could I buy Arthur's hat off you? Could you keep your mind on your work, huh, shoeshine boy? Hanging on to my peanut ball. Uh, never mind. I guess you won't talk about your business. Why not? I got nothing to hide. I recently acquired controlling interest in the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. Isn't a soup kitchen an odd line of business for a guy like you? I like soup. Plus, I got hot as big as all outdoors. Uh, buff a little hotter. I want to see myself in the toes. Hey, I represent United Charities of Hill Valley. Can you authorize me to pick up soup from your establishment and deliver it to some very deserving souls? Nah, that Strickland dame's got the charity racket pretty much locked up. No point in giving her competition. Edna Strickland thinks your soup kitchen might not be on the up and up. That dame gets on my nerves. Got a great pair of gams, though. Oh, so, one more thing about that hat. You're testing my patience, boy. I sure could go for some peanuts. Lucky for you, I'm in a given mood. Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! What'd you do? Oh. <clears throat> Give me that hat, you lousy crook! Emmett! a monkey out of Kid Tannen! Hey! hey! Ow! Fix me, fix me up! Where do you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out! For a sec, boy. Hey, boy, can you find the guy who belongs to this hat? Where is he going? Only one way to find out. Huh. Huh. Deja vu. Need any help? Um, never mind. Yeah? Who is it? It's McFly! Shh, I know! Hey, Arthur, can you come down a minute? Do I know you?
We've got something for you. It's a sub it's a subscription to the Accountant Weekly. It won't come out if he knows why we're really here. No, right. <laughs> I'm not interested. And besides, the boss won't let me leave the room. Sorry. Some other time. Okay, so we'll have to get something from Kit then. Some way to convince him that Kit wants him out. So I think that we will wrap up there for today. Um, I, this was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who was and wasn't here. Uh, extra special thank you to Bardock, Len, and, uh, D606. I don't... Well, D606 returns. And if you're here, feel free to tell me what you prefer to be called casually, but for now, just extra special thank you to, uh, D606 returns, uh, for the, uh, new, uh, new, uh, subscription. Or, sorry, follow. My bad. Uh, subscription and follow are two different things on Twitch. Uh, let me check a look and see if anyone is, uh, is streaming so I can raid them. Uh... It's a good day to whoops, have a whoops, good day. that's not what I meant to, I meant to, um, stream manager. Here we go. Read channel. All right, have a great time. Toodles.